Guys, I have a question for you. Go. So Aaron and I went out to a very nice uh, restaurant a couple weeks ago for our anniversary. Went out to Hawksmoor, uh, which oh. is a, Brit it's a British steakhouse. Very big over there, but they opened their flagship in, in New York City. My buddy Gabe works there. Shout out to Gabe. Really good food. Amazing food. Incredible. And good wine list. But I opened up the wine list, and I am struck because I know a lot more about wine now. I know mm -hmm. all these different types of wine there. But now I'm looking at this menu and it's going to be like a $300 meal because it's a very fancy steakhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was starting thinking, like, what are my rules or, or what am I like, you know, guiding my guidelines for buying a bottle of wine in a restaurant? Mm. It is like okay. you guys do like the avoid the, the cheapest wine on the on the menu thing. That is an intimidating proposition, that's for sure. Because some of those wine lists are, they can be, they're massive. They're absolutely massive. And super huge. Unless you know producers, which, you know, who really does? It's all just a bunch of stuff. You maybe you know the region, maybe you know the grape. And I think that's why, me personally, I always ask the sommelier if there is one for a recommendation. Mm. Yeah. I got to make Did myself you, do that. Do you ever do the second, second cheapest bottle of wine trick? <laughs> That's, I think that's usually what I do, to be honest with you. I'm like, yeah. well, I'm not going to get the, you know, whatever. I, I do say, I, I, I do have to say I, last couple times I have like done a little Googling a little oh, more yeah. of like looking up the wine and being like, Ooh, I kind of was producer, but like, I want to know how much it's marked out. Right. Cause if it's a $60 bottle of wine marked up to like 80 or $90, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm at a restaurant, like whatever. But if it's like a, $25 bottle of wine marked up to 50 bucks or, or 60 bucks. Like, I'm like, this is not going to be good. And I'm going to spend more than what I want to spend on a not good bottle of wine. You know, I, I'll yeah. spend more than what I want to spend on like what should be a good bottle of wine. But how, you know how I mean? obvious are you with the phone at the table though? Are you Take like, are you under up <laughs> the tablecloth Googling real quick, you know, looking at the menu and then going back under the thing, like trying to get I it. I sneak your mouth like the waiter's going to come by and be like, are you second guessing our price <laughs> point? dare you? <laughs> this is a Chili's. <laughs> you know, I I'm going to say I used to love the second cheapest, you know, bottle trick. Nowadays, I do more of a, I'll know maybe an area I want to go or a grape or something like that. And I'll, I'll find my like grouping of what I think will be somewhat decent. And then I'll find the diamond in the rough from a value perspective, if I can. And then still I'm like, oh God, I, I hope we chose correctly. <laughs> Welcome to Stop Wasting Your Wine, a wine review podcast where we waste our wine so you don't have to. On this episode, we review a red wine from Australia. Hey everyone, welcome back. Aaron here from the Stop Wasting Your Wine podcast. So excited to be joined by just two of the best guys I know. Joel, Colin, how the heck are you? Doing good, man. Doing real good. Yeah, excited to be back for another another wine. It's been a whole week since I've had a glass of wine just worked out that way so Whoa. yeah i know you have not had a glass of wine in a whole week no no it's been a busy week so this is this is the first one since the last time we recorded so it's nice to get back into it yeah yeah happy wow. to have you back i mean it's exciting time it's exciting time of year it's colin's first glass of wine a week it's harvest season do you guys know it's harvest i am learning so much First of all, I am not going to tell you how many glasses of wine I have had since we last got <laughs> together. Because that's, I can't believe that. And yes, speaking of wine, more wine coming our way. Harvesty, that is pretty exciting. Who knows yeah. what we're getting right now off those vines, huh? I'd love to get out there too, man. I think it would just be awesome just to experience it and work a harvest. And maybe, maybe when my kids are, you know, graduated college and i have a whole bunch of free time i'll uh make my way yeah, out bring the kids out with you grapes. they can get the low-hanging grapes and you get the ones <laughs> yeah, that's up. It's volunteering so you know it's fine you're For just sure. gonna hold off on drinking wine and doing anything until <laughs> your second kid is in college so you have 17 and a half years before you are back in the world yeah that's right i mean it's, it's hard plan yeah 
<laughs> no, but I, I, you guys, you know, we follow all these like really cool vineyards and stuff now on Instagram and I'm seeing all the videos out there and everyone out in the fields, hand picking the grapes. We, we've seen some of them have like fancy machines and all this stuff, but you know, a lot of them are just like lots of folks out there doing this manual labor. It's, it's pretty cool to see. It is pretty cool to see. And it's, I think it's, it's kind of a part of the whole process that you maybe don't think about if you don't take a second to just realize that, yeah, this is all everything that's in these wonderful bottles. And there's so many available to us on these shelves. They all start from these little grapes on these vines. And it's like the season is kicking off right now to get that to us. It is pretty cool. Colin, correct me if I'm wrong. It's it's a pretty like short period of time, right? It's not like this continuous thing that happens all year long, grape growing, grape picking. Like there's these chunks of time where it's like, okay, it's time to start harvesting and you have to get it done in the certain period of time. Yeah, of course. As soon as the grapes get ripe, you really only have based on the well, there are a lot of decisions that go into when you pick, but yeah, the really you have a couple months to to pick all your grapes depending upon where you are which grapes you're growing, how ripe you want them to get, which goes into the style of the wine. So there's a lot that, that goes into when to pick. And and th this whole conversation, like, and it, especially what Joel said, reminds me of going back to our conversation with Jim Dwayne. And he said how much work mm -hmm. actually making wine is. You know, a lot of times you think of the, the romanticism of making wine, but you very rarely hear about the backbreaking work that goes into it. And I think Harvest is a great example of just the amount of work you have to put in. The real sexy videos are like the last five <laughs> minutes of the process, right? Yeah. Where they're like yeah. dipping the ladle in, they're like testing it. Yeah, and like that's right. Out. That's or, right. You know, doing a little thing where they put the, the glass in, swish it around and sip. Like that's like the last five minutes of a year of work. That's right. Yep. That's the stuff they, we get to see. Express pass like all of the farming, the field, the hard work that's going into it. By the way, if I were working a harvest, the ratio of grapes that made it into my mouth versus into whatever receptacle I was supposed to put it into would be like one to eight, probably one to six, maybe if it's really hot, I don't know. But that, how do you not <laughs> just as you're out there? I'd be popping them. You, you get fired, probably. That's that's, that's, probably probably get that's, fired. How, that's how you don't. You just lose your job. You're eating eating so money. We can't hire you to do this. You ate half the harvest. You're like see no. me out there. Come on, I'm in the fields, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Yeah, but no, but it's, it's man, it's just it's just very cool. I'm very excited about it. Almost as excited as I am about this episode. We're doing a lot of cool things. We're gonna try a brand new game that we're gonna call. I'm wine with that. I'll tell you a little bit more about that soon. Love the and uh, nobody ran this by me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, nobody you ran know. this by me, but I need to know nothing more than the name to tell you that I'm 100% <laughs> in. Let's do it. Good. Good. I'm excited that you're excited. And Colin's going to teach us a little bit about the other four things about Clare Valley, which is where we are today in Australia. We haven't been here in a while, so that's really exciting as well. Joel, can you tell us a little bit more about the Australian wine that we're drinking today? I can. And before I do that, too, do you think it's harvest season in Australia right now? Or since they're kind of flipped, right? Seasonality. Yeah. No, it's definitely it not. Is? No, yeah, they're so on the, it's not, right? They're on the other side of the equator. So it would yeah. be it'd be flipped. Yeah, no, it's it's cold there right now. Interesting. So we're seeing we're seeing a lot of the northern hemisphere harvest season right now. Exclusively, they're in, the spring, the they're in our spring, right? Yeah, yeah, exclusively. Anywhere where the drains drain clockwise, it's harvest season. <laughs> if you're somewhere where the drains drain counterclockwise, it's not. That's actually how they determine whether or not they just flush their toilet and they're like, "All right, we got to go. It's time. It's time. It's time." Anyway, I'm no expert, but I don't think that's how. Can it you works. tell us about the wide Joel? <laughs> Uh, the wine that we're drinking today. Very exciting. So this is the Napstein Shiraz. This is the 2021. So this is 100% Shiraz. This is from Clare Valley, Australia. This has an ABV of 14.5%. And we picked this up for $19.99. 14.5%. Yeah, it's packing a little bit. That's, that's, a, that's a heavy hitter right there. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I didn't know that when I grabbed this one. Yes, you did. Ah. Get out of here. 
<laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm super excited. We haven't done Syrah Shiraz in a while. We haven't uh, been to Australia in a while. So this is pretty cool. And, you know, I, I did grab this one. This was me. And I also want to point out this is a 92 pointer from our friend James Suckling. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So an under $20, 92 pointer. I I am excited about the potential here. Yeah, I am too. For sure. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. very familiar with the Clare Valley. So I'm excited to see what kind of Shiraz they're making because I'm, I'm just, I don't Shiraz. think I've ever had a Shiraz from the Clare Valley. So this We're gonna change that. Yeah, I know. I'm cool. excited to jump into it. Try mm-hmm. something new. Cool. Well, you know, Colin is going to teach us a little bit about it. But before we do that, let's play a new game. Let's do it. Can't wait. I'm wine with that. There you go. That's actually just the sound. We're going to clip it, and that's going to be the official I, uh, noise. That will be the drop. drop. That will be the drop. That's awesome. <laughs> Keep a little beat. All right. Just, the... <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm wine with that. All right, gentlemen. I, I'm, I'm excited about this one. This one just kind of came to me. We'll see how it goes. Here's the premise of the game. Very very simply the premise of the game is that you have been offered the opportunity to drink a two thousand dollar bottle of wine however okay you have to share that bottle of wine experience it and drink with a random character of sorts i am going to describe that character to you and you have to let me know i'm wine with that okay or i'm not wine with that (laughs) all right I okay. love the idea. Let's see. I can't wait okay. to see what characters we're meeting on our journey here. <laughs> All right. So starting off, gentlemen, you have been offered the opportunity to drink a $2,000 bottle of wine, but you have to share it with an overly drunk bar patron who spends the entire time trying to explain to you why their marriage fell apart. Oh. oh. Are you on with that? Am I paying for this bottle of wine or I, I'm being given this bottle of wine? You're being given the opportunity, but you have to spend the whole time sitting there with the person at like a, just a, a nice little table, the two of you, candle in the middle. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I think I'm on with that because I have pr- pretty good uh, ability to just totally tune people out, especially if I'm interested in something else. And I'm pretty sure I can lose myself in the $2,000 bottle of wine while Mr. Yappity drones on about his failed marriage. So I, I'm going for it. <laughs> Joel? I am not wine with that. <laughs> 100%. The people around me have a direct impact, not only on how I'm enjoying something, but how I will think of that event years to come. <laughs> I'm the kind of guy who like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, I was kind of an asshole to that one guy when I was 13. I hope he's doing all right. <laughs> the same thing in my head that will do that will make me think, God, that was such an awful experience with that guy. So not wine with that. All right. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, you are at a very busy restaurant and you have the opportunity to drink a $2,000 bottle of wine with your uncle that keeps trying to show you videos on Facebook that he says are funny, but they're five minutes long and he keeps holding his phone in front of you and watching you as you watch the video waiting for you to laugh. Can I go first? Because I'm so wine yep. with that. <laughs> That's totally cool. That's totally cool. Here's the difference. I'm not listening to him yapping. <laughs> you know, I'm watching some boring things. That's fine. At least there's no talky talk. I can just think and, and drink the wine. Yeah, I think I'm Tom. I'm on with that too. I do, just kind of like the last one, and that's at least your uncle. As long as you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least you know the guy. He's family, so yeah, uh, yeah. Funny. I could I could probably probably deal with that. I'm on with that. I'll tell you this much. I've been in that exact situation, not drinking a $2,000 bottle of wine, <laughs> and I've survived. So I think yeah. be all right. Add the wine, yeah. you're good. All right. You're sitting in a busy restaurant. You got your $2,000 bottle of wine. You mm-hmm. were sitting with your celebrity crush, uh, but you're naked. <laughs> so wide with that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an additional part? <laughs> you're not supposed to be. Wait, is my celebrity crush okay with the fact that I'm naked at the table? Or are they weirded out by that? Because that's a big part of whether or not I'm wine with that. Uh, They knew it was part of the deal. And you're in a public restaurant? So it's just like, it's you, naked you, your celebrity crush in a public area. Yeah, it's called public art. Everyone signed on to knowing that and you're just, you know, you're you're the center of attention. So legally we're okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no, yeah. there's no uh, legal repercussions here, moral repercussions. You just have to know if you're okay with being totally nude in front of a bunch of people in Taylor Swift. I'm wine with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. YOLO, <laughs> baby. Come on. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't know if I believe you, but okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here in this I think we're, I, I actually I want to see the two thousand bottle well two thousand dollar bottle of wine. I want to put this in front of Colin and I want to actually see him make the decision to like <laughs> yeah, move yeah. forward with this plan. I don't know if I believe you, sir. Um, all right, last one. You got your two thousand dollar bottle of wine. You're in a restaurant. You're sitting down with your aunt that you're pretty sure was at the Capitol on January sixth. Oh, God. oh, oh, that's a hard pass. Why did I know you would? I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not can I say with that? that? What episode is this? Is this 60? Uh, 62. I can't believe it took you 62 episodes to to bring, bring something of this vein <laughs> into the conversation. Not why with that. I don't want to see that. Not why with that? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, come on. She's going to spend the entire time explaining to you why it was totally okay that she was oh there. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not wine with no. that. Kill it, man. Okay. <laughs> all right well this has been the first the first installment of i'm wine with that i was wine with okay. that i like it i'm into it yeah how we feel about that game are we wine with that yeah with that game i, I sure. was i think it was fun yeah wonderful that's funny wonderful wonderful all right well i hope you all enjoyed your two thousand dollar balls of wine and your public nudity let's move on from that i always do colin <laughs> and I've oh. never had a two thousand dollar bottle of wine. Let's go. <laughs> Colin, what did we learn about today? <laughs> Save us, Colin. <laughs> this is the only thing you will learn. All right. So Yes, thank you, Aaron. That was that was a lot of fun. This evening, we are learning about the Clare Valley, which, of course, we are in Australia. And the Clare Valley, I mentioned before, I've never had a Shiraz from the Clare Valley. That's maybe because it's not the most popular grape that comes out of the Clare Valley. Uh, the Clare Valley is actually most famous for Riesling. It has a... Interesting. Yes. Uh, it has a rather cool climate and uh, higher elevation, which is perfect condition for crisp white wines. So, you know, that might be an interesting one to try in the future. If we like the uh, Shiraz here, we might want to seek out a Clare Valley Riesling. So the second thing you need to know about the Clare Valley, it has rather diverse microclimates, which actually allows for a uh, grape like Shiraz to grow. Because if it was too cold, you wouldn't necessarily be able to grow red grapes. It might be almost specifically geared toward white grapes. It, it's a pretty interesting landscape. So you do find some warmer areas, although it's still in general going to be a little bit cooler than the rest of Australia, which is known for rather warm climates. So the third thing you need to know about the Clare Valley is it has some incredibly old Shiraz vines, actually some of the oldest Shiraz vines in all of Australia, some mm. being over a hundred years old, which is Whoa. pretty crazy to think about. You know, I don't, I'm not sure about this wine, but vines like that, they're not going to produce necessarily as many grapes, but the ones that they are going to produce, that vine is so withered and it knows exactly what to do after a hundred years. So the grapes it is going to produce are going to be so concentrated and flavorful. So those wines can be absolutely stunning. So that's really cool. Something to look out for too. If you're looking at other Clear Valley Shiraz, look for some of those old vine Shirazes. The fourth thing you need to know about the Clear Valley and this is kind of what you can expect from Clare Valley Shiraz is, I mentioned it has a cool climate and that of course is going to influence the grapes and the final wine. Because of the higher elevation, it's going to be cooler. So you can actually expect a lot of the Syrah that comes out of the Clare Valley to be closer to the Syrah you would find in France in the, the Northern Rhone because mm. it doesn't have that warm climate. So it's not going to be like some of the other Shiraz you might find in say the Barossa Valley, which is going to be big, bold, opulent. These wines might have fresher fruit. They might have some herbal qualities, maybe some, some meatiness, like literal smoked meat quality, which again is more typical of Europe and Syrah as opposed to Australia and Shiraz. 
that's what you need to know and look out for when you're buying wines from the Clare Valley. Nice. That's very, very cool. And I was like, I was looking at the map to kind of see where it is. So this is like Southeast Australia. And from like a longitudinal standpoint, like we're looking around the same kind of areas like South Africa and then like Argentina. So, you know, I think that's just kind of interesting to think about similar climates. Now this winery that we're at is actually 50 years old they're celebrating their 50th anniversary this year and i think their shiraz vines are in their 30s i think i was reading online so those are still relatively old i mean if you think about it so you could probably get some good concentration out of those i'd love to try some of that 100 year old vine shiraz i mean god that wine must be incredible absolutely sounds very cool con thank you for sharing all that every time i get to one of these new regions i just get so excited i know and well done to you sir this was this was your pick and Mm -hmm. again bringing us to you know a place maybe a little bit off the beaten path maybe you know something that folks hadn't heard of i know i hadn't so we've had pretty good luck with with doing that so i'm really hoping that you nailed it again today Aaron. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And you know, I said kind of earlier, like I saw it was 90 points, so it was great, but also like I'm yeah. excited to get back to Australia. I'm excited to try Shiraz again. I am excited that it's an under twenty dollar bottle of wine. Yeah, a lot of potential here. Yeah. So let's see what we got. A lot of similarities to our wine last week. Also a ninety two pointer, not Mr. Suckling's choice, but mm. also a ninety two mm, pointer. True, true, true. Also a little under $20 and a little bit, you know, an area in California that's not exactly known for their mm-hmm. wine production. Would you call Syrah Shiraz like a similar known wine as Pinot Noir? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I, I mean, I'd put it with Cab and Merlot, Pinot Noir. You know, it might be the tier below, but I, I think it's absolutely one of the better known that- red wines out there. That makes me a little nervous again now. Thanks for bringing that up, Joel. Now I'm now I'm nervous well, again. Well, you know? what's interesting too is is and tell me. I mean, this might be completely off base, but I do feel like Syrah. While obviously there's 100 percent Syrah and Shiraz, like we're drinking today, I also find that a lot of times it's used to blend and to bring a little bit of of body and something to to a blend. So I, I was sort of like you were saying, maybe Aaron, like. Maybe there's less 100% examples out there and maybe mm-hmm. why people wouldn't 100% you know, recognize the grape so much or feel like they have a good understanding of it because I feel like it is a, a blending grape a lot. Is that completely off base? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's definitely a smaller section of the store, like from just a logistic, like, you know, you go to the cab section and it's like an entire aisle and then the Syrah Syrahs is, is like one. For sure. Yeah. In the back. yeah, I'm excited about this wine, too, because after researching Clare Valley and kind of learning about the climate, it'll be interesting to see how this Shiraz compares to what you would think of a more French style Syrah, because, you know, to me, those things are totally different. Obviously, 100 percent the same grape, but Shiraz, you usually think big, bold in your face. Syrah, you think a little bit more refined, I would say, mm-hmm. maybe a little more herbal. So it'll be interesting to see where this fits under the name Shiraz. And just the name, this is a bit of a recap. We did talk about this once before, but for our listeners who are learning along with us, Shiraz and Syrah is is the same grape. And the the difference between Syrah and Shiraz is regionally and stylistic, Mm -hmm. correct? That's correct. And Shiraz mostly being Australia, New Zealand, and Syrah being Europe. Yeah. For the most part. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, we've talked about this a lot. Yes. Uh, let's let's get into it. Uh, okay. Tastes like wine. All right. So let's start off on the nose. Colin, do you want to get us started? What are you getting? I'm getting some like blackberry. I think it is definitely the the big one right off the bat. Uh, maybe a little blueberry as well like it's kind of all those bramble berries they call them i can circle back in a minute but you guys have anything to fill in yeah that's funny i i was actually gonna say little little bit of plum and then like a dark cherry to me which i guess is still in the vein of what you were talking about but then also something a little i don't know if it's it's not it's not earthy 
Um, but maybe a little leathery, or maybe it's that smoked meatiness that you were talking about that's coming through. I, I can't decide just yet, but there's something else there. <laughs> what do you think, Eric? I'd say it's definitely a lot more nuanced than you know some of the reds. You know, it's it's not a fruit bomb. It's not like you pour it and you get hit in the face with with a million different things. I'm definitely having to work a little bit more. Definitely everything you all said, especially you know the the dark, you know, red fruits and whatnot. But it is. It is it is a more nuanced smell. It's it's not a punch in the face of aroma. Yep. Colin, did you get anything new in your swirls? Yeah, maybe slightly herbal, and then That's or it maybe herbal bordering floral. You know, I I think I'd be okay if you were to argue either. And it actually it reminds me a lot of Cab Franc, which is super weird. It's like a, a lot of the same notes of Cab Franc without the like the the dirt. The I usually get some. Yeah, yeah, with the Cab Franc funk, that's right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the the same flavor profile, which is super interesting, because I usually when I smell a wine, I don't immediately think of another wine. But this, for some reason, snapped me straight to Cab Franc, which is super super interesting. Mm -hmm. Not to say that's good or bad; it's just a unique mm -hmm. unique part of this wine. Very I'm cool. gonna land my on that part that I couldn't figure out. I'm gonna land my plane on leathery for now. I don't know if that's exactly what I'm going for, but that's what I'm gonna say. And maybe and this is a new one after some more swirling. Maybe a little minty but like minty. not in like that weird fake merlot mint yeah. that we've had in the past but like fresh almost mint leaf yeah wow. clearly very natural like nothing artificial happening here but like yeah i, I kind of like that light almost and that might be I, i'm not for a 14 and a half percent i'm also not getting like that super big alcohol burn on the nose that we've gotten with some wine 100 so that is you know that that's a good green flag moving forward that you know, we're not getting hit with that. But yeah, I totally get what you're saying on that column with just kind of maybe that like cool kind of scent coming <laughs> off the very top. Uh, yeah. Cool. Let's give it a try. While you guys are thinking about that, I want to name that one. It is because it is from Australia, right? There is a twist off that is uh, very cool. You know, you, you know, that is part of their sustainability push over there, right? They don't do cork. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, well, we, we learned about that a while back, I believe. It's not that they don't do cork, but some people. They tend to lean away. From, uh, there's many. I know that Napstein specifically talks a lot about sustainability mm -hmm. and eco-friendly viticulture on their website. So I, I imagine that probably has something to do with this. So it is a twist off cap. I also, you know, we opened this up a while ago. Definitely let it air out a little bit. And I put my dragon aerator on there because it seemed like the right <laughs> kind of wine for that move. Joel, I'll start with you. What are you getting? I immediately am going away from my leatheriness claim. To me, it's it's pretty darn different than the nose. It's a little bit, this might not make any sense, but like a little bit fresher than I was expecting as far as the fruits go. No, that makes total sense. I would agree. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm not crazy. And then I'm going to go back to dirt. <laughs> are you getting like a little <laughs> bit of like a clean? Or no, you know what it might be is a... Uh, Almost like a gravelly. It's like somewhere I want to say gravel because I'm in the middle of minerality and dirt. So maybe gravel is exactly where I want to be. Selling the hell out of this wine, Joel. I'll tell you what, though, in a, in a nice way. I'm not a, a, that that shouldn't come off as there a it negative. is. There it is. Yeah, I actually had to check the bottle because I wasn't sure if this had oak on it. Which now thinking about it, you know, now that I've read that it has been oaked. It's blatantly obvious, but for some reason, I wasn't able to pick up on that, which I actually think is kind of nice because the fruit definitely speaks, I would say, more so than any of the other flavors. You get a lot of that dark fruit up front. And then I think for me, it's more herbal than it is gravelly or, yeah. uh, you know, earthy. So that's kind of where I'd go with that. It's, it's actually, it's really nice. The, the flavor is and it's not big as I thought it would be. And, and again, maybe that goes back to the climate. But even at 14.5%, you're not getting absolutely just smacked in the face with a lot of this, which, you know, at 14.5%, I was kind of expecting overly oaked, over big giant fruit bomb. And it, like Joel said, this fruit is very fresh. Nothing is too intense here. And it all it all kind of works pretty well together. Yeah, I'm just from a structure standpoint, like very happy with the balance of this wine. I think, you know, last week we talked about the balance just seemed off. Like it just wasn't really sure where it was supposed to be, where this is, you know, 
a really like medium tannin, medium body, a little acidic. How dry would you put this? All the way. It's All the way dry. dry. Is it dry AF? Do we finally have our dry AF? I mean, definitely could be. Ready forever. Yeah, I would. Been ready. I, might, I might disagree on the like straight medium of everything. Everything's kind of medium plus to me. Like the body okay. is a little heavier. I think the tannin is definitely maybe medium on the sip. But if you just sit there and think about the tannin, it's pretty intense. So I might say medium plus tannin. But it is all very well balanced. I, I do completely well, say, nothing agree with is that. high, right? Like no. outside of outside of the dryness, like everything is like medium plus ish. And again, for fourteen and a half percent, like I keep waiting for an aftertaste of alcohol or a little burn or something, and it's not there. No, nothing's out of place. I'll say that it all fits very well together. I, that's one area where I might disagree slightly. I think the finish is where I'm reminded that it's fourteen and a half percent. Uh, Just and a little bit at the now end. That you mentioned the oakiness that that it's seen smoke, and you know it's not taking me out of it. It's not making it unpleasant, mm -hmm. but I do think that there's a little reminder. Hey, I am packing a little bit of a punch here at the end. No, I don't disagree with that. You could definitely. There's almost like a an alcohol burn, but even though that is the case, it's not unpleasant. Like it doesn't draw me away from any of the nice things going on, as opposed to even like the 13 and a half percent wine we had last week, you know, the burn yeah. there was just like, Oh God, like it was, it was so unpleasant yeah. that it, it took me away from anything nice that was going on there. Not the case for this wine, but it's also 14 and a half percent. That's a lot of alcohol in a bottle of wine. So you're, it's you're almost bound to feel it. Known. Yeah. yeah, it's less alcohol yeah, in that sure. bottle of wine than there was ten minutes ago. I'll tell you that. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. There we go. All right, got him. All right, man. I'll, but I'll tell you, we started this episode where we're talking about getting wine at a steakhouse. I would love a steak right now. Yeah, with, with this bottle of wine, one hundred percent. My goodness, I want a pork chop. I want a big charred pork chop with this. Yep. Yeah, I will say, like, I, and I, I kind of mentioned this before, but. This is this is almost more French than it is Australian. It, it's like Australian with a French twist, which is mm. super interesting because I've never had a wine from Australia that's been so, and I'm sure they're out there, but I don't drink a ton of Australian wine, but so refined at such a big ABV with everything being so nicely put together. Cool. So it sounds like we're edging towards a review. So let's do it. Yeah. But did they like it? It's time for the review. All right. So <laughs> it's kind of weird. This is my wine and I'm hosting. So I will go last, which is awkward. Joel, what do you think? Yeah. Where are you sticking this wine? I am sticking this wine right up there on the kitchen table. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is lovely. It's, it's lovely. It, uh, we knew from the, from, you know, the nose that it was going to be fun and interesting. I like how it's, it was different. Sometimes we're like, you know, we, we smell it and then we sip it. And we're like, yep, totally. We got it. That's it. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not so good, but this one I think was a cool experience the whole way around. It took me a minute to even really figure out some of the things that I was trying to to identify, which I think is always fun. And when I'm doing that and I'm enjoying the wine at the same time, that's a that's a kitchen table to me. So going right there on the kitchen table. Lovely, Colin. Yeah, I would agree. I would even put it at the front of the kitchen table. This is mm -hmm. probably not too far out of the wine fridge, but I, I also can't think of one that I'd want to take out for this. With that being said, it's it's excellent. Definitely a wine you want to let decant. When I yeah. first opened this, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> we are in trouble. But, you know, it's been open for almost an hour now, and it's really opened up. It's really well balanced. I really like the fruit. Like Joel was getting at, it's rather complex. You know, there's a lot going on in here. You could really think about this one for a while if you wanted to. It's just tasty. It's it's fun to drink. And I, I like a wine that makes you think. And this is definitely one of those. So this is a, a must-share kitchen table wine for sure. Absolutely. I'm putting this in my wine fridge. What? Hey, oh, I'm, I'm, right. that happening. Woo, woo. I'm proud of you. <laughs> like, I have always liked Syrah. I've always liked Shiraz. And I've been really kind of bummed recently that we haven't found one that we really like. And... I just, I like this. I like the balance. I like the flavors. I have the Stag's Leap Chardonnay. 
I believe, in my wine fridge. And, you know, when we put it in there, I was like, I don't know how long this is going to make it. It's good. It deserves its flowers. But, mm-hmm. you know, I- I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Thank it for its time, you know, and I'm going to replace it with the, the Napsine Clear Valley Shiraz because it's just it's tasty. It's good. It's a thinker. It's $20 and it what? is definitely a wine. It's $20. Yeah. I'm definitely going to grab it. It's going to be going to have some in my house ready to go. It's a good wine. It's worth buying. It's worth sharing. And it's worth just having when you want to have like a nice meal or something going on. Yeah. So in my wine fridge. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't blame you for that at all. Like I said, if I had a spot, it might be in there. Yeah. Also, I just want to say you nailed it again. You nailed it with the new region, new area to explore. Well done. And you made it a wine fridge wine. And we all support you on that. So yeah, no, love it. Yep. I think this might be one of my first ones that got two kitchen tables and a wine fridge. Is this your highest rated wine ever? I think this is my highest rated <laughs> wine ever. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I love that yeah. for you. Thank you. Thank Exciting. you very much. I'm, I'm proud of me. <laughs> Thanks for being proud of me. Happy to be here, folks. Always proud. Um, thanks. Always. No, exciting. So, man, we've had a, we've had a couple of fridge wines recently. Joel put mm-hmm. the Planeta in his. Uh, I now I, I have yeah. uh, the Shiraz. Been drinking we some good, good wines. We are I'm proud of us. Except Both of those week. were under twenty bucks. Uh, except the last one. Last Sorry, Joel. Not Can't great. win them all. Hey, um, yeah, I was trying something new. Trying something new. No, hey, listen, you, part yeah, of it. we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> Well, guys, man, another great episode. We have an excellent must-share wine that we recommend grabbing. One more time, Joel, what are we drinking? Yes, so this wine that is definitely not a waste of your wine is the Napstein Shiraz. This is the 2021 from Clare Valley, Australia. Very cool. You can pick this up at your Total Wine or Major Wine Shops. We learned a little bit about Clare Valley today. We played a new game. So much fun. Uh, if you want to keep it's an hour well having spent fun, right here. an hour <laughs> well spent that'll get whittled down into a 30 ish minute yeah. episode. But for the listener at home, <laughs> to, we've to been sitting here 35. for quite some time. <laughs> yeah. So much more uh, on the cutting room floor than in the episode. Little peek sure. behind the curtain for you. See the magic that happens. <laughs> I was like, uh, Colin, if folks want to hang out with us, talk to us a little bit, even reach out with suggestions or want to come on the show, where would they reach us? Oh, sure. The big three, as I like to call them. I don't know why the I went there again baby. with that. <laughs> Not it's, do it again. Yeah, keep going. The big <laughs> three. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're going to okay. make it a thing. Yeah. All right. The big three. We got Instagram. Check us out at Stop Wasting Your Wine. We got YouTube. Stop Wasting Your Wine. And we got our website. StopWastingYourWine.com. Stop Bam. Big three. Check us out. Big three. Always on there, always talking to people. You know, send us a DM on Instagram. I will get back to you shockingly fast. It's almost like I'm just staring at my phone all the time. If you catch this guy um, while he's on the train, you can have a one on one conversation for like 30 minutes with this guy. You will get a response from me before your phone makes it from your hand to your pocket. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, just so you know. All right. Exciting one. So much fun. Man, I can't wait till next week. Every week's a great week. Till next time, y'all. <laughs> Bye, that. y'all. Way to end it on a positive note. And remember, Dude, stop I'm wasting just... your wine. <laughs> Bye. Positive vibes only. <laughs> <laughs>